Driving a Volkswagen Cabriolet quickly is not driving a slow car fast. A Subaru BRZ is a slow car fast. My 2001 Mazda Protégé MP3, it's a well handled, like it's a well put together package that goes kind of quickly, but it will keep up with traffic. The 80s and 90s cars that have sub 100 horsepower, 14 inch tires, and stock suspension are not slow cars. They are abysmally slow cars. They are apocalyptically slow cars. And those are very entertaining in their own way, but I feel like they're in a different group. Because it's not the same as driving something that is well put together that you can kind of keep speed through. This is, it doesn't accelerate, it doesn't brake, it doesn't turn, it pitches and it moans, and the seat rails in a Volkswagen Cabriolet are not bolted in in the same way new seats are. You move, like, at least an inch. You'll watch the headrest move in some of these corners because the whole seat will just, it is driving a different type of vehicle. And the only way I can really describe it is recently I turned on my, my PS2 Slim and played Gran Turismo 3 or Apex, I think it is. And it was such a rush back in time because while that game, if you turn all the right settings, it is a simulation and it does have car-like characteristics and simulation-like characteristics if you play that game. 240p and 10 frames per second with really questionable graphics and like the 2D people on the side of the track. It's it's a different experience, but if you push it, if you drive it like you expect a car to handle, and you just kind of work around the handling limits of the PS2's graphics, you realize that it acts like a car in like slow motion. You turn in, yeah, that's car-like. <laughs> and your seat kind of moves and the car squeals and you're doing 60. So you do car-like things with car-like motions in just very different ways. And so it's like that throwback where you play an old video game and you can sit down and you can put a smile on your face and you can have fun while you're doing it. But it's, there's something fundamentally different about how it is. And I, I really love it. This car constantly puts a smile on my face. But there's a problem. The novelty of playing that old video game will wear off in the same sense that trying to scan flick the car into every single corner will get old and your passengers may get car sick. And that's where I feel as though other hardtop cars in this era that are the sub 2,500 pound, sub 100 horsepower, stick shift little wobble mobiles don't have a second personality. But if you take the top off of a car, wherever you are becomes your environment. So if you're downtown in your city on the main street, you're gonna be part of that. If you're playing a goofy song or you have stupid glasses on and you cruise along, all of a sudden the car is no longer the focus of entertainment but your large world building is part of how you're having fun. So the cabbie has a second personality that disconnects it from having to give you your entertainment. It allows your environment to do so. The cabbie, I think, is better than a comparable cars at the time. Even a Rabbit GTI, I would sooner have a cabbie because when you're going slowly, there's a lot more headroom. I got a lot more headroom. I, I, I haven't hit the roof once. I have if it's up. It's tiny in here if it's up. But if the roof is down, it's a whole new experience. And you've already accepted. If you're in a cabbie, you're in a bitch basket. You have more fun. And yeah, it's a bitch basket. It's, it's, it's got this goofy-like personality of a little car that feels like it's lifting a wheel every time you come into a corner. And then when you're downtown, you just got to park it and smile because the thing's kind of cute. <clears throat> If you want to own a cabbie that apparently literally shakes my camera out of focus. Oh no! And then while I'm trying to focus it back, it then I hit the button to record. One of the coolest things I think about this car, and regular car reviews touched about it on the Volkswagen Beetle, is that I'm trying to sell this car right now, and even when I wasn't, People who would come up to me want to own these cars, knowing that they're classic Volkswagens. Currently, the coolant temperature gauge, the clock, the oil pressure gauge, the oil temperature gauge, the volt meter, the cigarette lighter, the power top, the high beams, 
and that power window quite often and any of the interior lighting and the radio that's not there and the heating controls that are always slightly on don't work. That's a good list. That's a lot of things that don't work. And people are still interested in it. People know this. It's a 30-year-old Volkswagen. Oh, and the odometer. That doesn't work. And the high beams, if I didn't say those already. There's a lot of things that don't work, but people still have the interest in getting into it. And they recognize, car people and non-car people alike, that if they want to own this, and people do, they're going to learn. And so it's really neat that it brings people who aren't normally into cars learning how to fix them, learning how to work on them, because they want to experience what the Volkswagen brings. And so he mentioned that while he doesn't like the Volkswagen Beetle, he appreciates that it brings people into the car world. I love the Cabriolet. It's a great car, and lots of car people know it. And I'm happy as well to see that people outside of the car world are bringing it in as well, are bringing into it. And so there's a lot to say about this little car. It's fun. <clears throat> The Volkswagen Cabriolet is like an ice cream treat. It's not something you need, you can only really enjoy it in the summer, but it's something you always want. And of course, if you spend more money on it, you'll get a better one, but in any case, they're gonna make you smile. And what I find impressive about these against other regular 80s and 90s four-cylinder cars is it makes you have fun whether you're in the city or on a back road. And so I find the versatility really impressive, which is why this is my Volkswagen Cabriolet and not one I borrowed for this shoot. They're fun little cars. You're gonna have to learn how to get to work on them but you're gonna to want to because like I've done with this one by accenting it with little colors and spending it Saturday polishing it. Once you have one, it warms its way into your heart and you just wanna keep it forever. Thank you very much for watching 200 Degrees and we'll see you on next episode.